Okay, whenever you're ready, Aaron. Imagine for a moment being born prematurely and having your small intestine or your large intestine removed surgically at an early age. Imagine holding down your, your nausea as you try to eat for the first time in days. Now imagine the medicine that you always use as it is gripped away by the U.S. federal government. That is the story of my best friend. Dylan, through Colorado law, is a user of medical marijuana, and his story has inspired me to research about the history of hemp in Colorado, as well as the medical history, or the history of hemp in early America, as well as history and legislation of Colorado. When one thinks of hemp, one often associates it with its narcotic properties. But it's interesting to know that the hemp plant of early cultivation only vaguely resembles the marijuana plant smoked for narcotic properties today. Author Mark Worry makes the following comparison. Marijuana resembles hemp about as much as the garden rose resembles its cousin, uh, the strawberry. Through years of cultivation, hemp has been bred to hemp has been bred to primarily increase its poten potency as a drug. The once long stalks and single flowering plants are now short, bushy, and filled with many flowers, as the potency of marijuana comes from the, the pollen and the flowers from the THD. All hemp originates. Okay. All hemp originates from Central Asia, but it also has many important roots in the old world, such as such as Egypt, Rome, France, and England. Hemp finally made its way to the United States. Went to the United States in 1611 when, uh, when English. Uh, I'm really bad at perceiving my speech. I'm sorry. No worries. You're doing a great job. Yeah, great job. Super good job. You, you're right. getting overwhelmed by something you don't need to be. All right. When it was brought to Virginia by English colonists, and by 1630, the first processing plants called rope walks were formed in Britain. These roadblocks were manned by immigrants and eventually sparked the Boston Massacre when British soldiers applied for work in the roadblocks in the winters of 1770 and were treated horribly. Hemp was on the rise in the United States. In fact, farmers were able to pay their taxes in hemp, um, influenced by George Washington. During the Industrial Revolution, however, hemp sort of slowed down as cotton replaced it as a source of clothing due to cotton mills and slave labor. But it wasn't until but it wasn't until the Civil War where hemp really started dying out. With the in invention of steam-powered uh, warships, the need for hemp and, and ropes would also decrease. The final blow was the American, or the final blow was the Marijuana Tax Act, and that was passed shortly after George Slitson's invention of the de decorator, which aided in the processing of hemp. Though Colorado is though Colorado has been one of the one of the first states to ban hemp. In 1914, alongside Texas, New Mexico, and Montana, it has also been one of the first to bring it back. In 2000, Colorado voters voted and passed on the 20th, uh, 20th Amendment, which made medical marijuana legal under state law. Although it's still prosecuted under federal law, card-holding patients can legally card-holding patients can own and possess two ounces of marijuana and six or six plants, only three in bloom.
Then in 2007, the Denver Initiative was also passed with an amazing 75% of votes. This made it so that all Denver residents, cardholding or not, could legally own an ounce of marijuana. The initiative's success was largely due to a certain organization called Safer Choice, which is an acronym for Safe Alternative for Recreational Enjoyment, for Enjoyable Recreation. Uh, and Executive Director Mark Svet said in Trine, the people of Denver have made it unconditionally clear that they do not want their city wasting its limited law enforcement resources arresting and prosecuting adults for possessing a drug less harmful than alcohol. The third and most recent event that aided in Colorado's fight for legalization happened last year when President Barack Obama declared that he would stop president he would stop raiding on dispensaries that work under state law. And as you can see, these are the states that have legally uh, allowed medical use of marijuana. Obama said, I'm not going to be using the Justice Department to try to circu circumvent state laws on this issue. The DEA did not set well with the Obama's decision and continue making raids. Dan Burnoff Spokesman for the Mer Medical Marijuana Policy Project spoke out against the DA, saying, it's clear that the DA is showing no respect for President Obama's campaign promises. In February this year, the DA has made two high-profile raids. One on Full Spectrum Labs, a testing facility that tests the different strains and that tests the different strains of marijuana, and one on Chris Barkenwitz, a Highland Ranch uh, grower who now thinks to bra his, bra his bragging to DEA or Denver NBC affiliates about his basement medicine is now facing federal charges. Shortly after, DEA Chief Jeff Sweden said, the time is coming when we go into a dispensary, we find out what their profit is, we seize the building and we arrest everybody. They were violating federal law they're at risk of arrest and imprisonment. This was after Barack Obama promised to leave federal government out. When Colorado residents are speaking, many Colorado residents are speaking out against the hypocrisy of the federal government, but Sweden defends himself, at least in the case of Markwitz, by saying that the media caused misconceptions and his story was often, uh, and his story was often misconstrued. According to Sweden, certain areas of the stories were fabricated, missing or untrue. He told Westward, we learned about the stories from Channel 9's blog where they had a guy talking about his marijuana grow in a suburban neighborhood. We were led to believe it was a massive grow in a suburban area that was, and that the owner expected to make 400,000 or more a year. We thought this guy may be outside the line. You think suburban, you think kids. You wonder, is there a health risk? What really happened was this. You had a large girl next to a school. There are times when you, there are some times when you can overlook and there are some you have to look at. We keep hearing about this raid, but there was no raid. We knocked on the doors and they let us in. We didn't kick up in the door and gum up face everyone. Sweden made a final remark ending his interview. It is interesting that this plate, that the place willing to print my side is Westwood. It is my wish that you've learned a little bit about hemp's role in story as well as some Colorado marijuana laws that have been passed. We must all remember that accurate information is important when dealing with controversial topics like marijuana legislation. I ask you today, will you leave your mark in history?